Let's go now to CBS 13 political analyst Gary Dietrich, who is in studio now. And Gary, uh, wow, 50 years in public service, three decades in the U.S. Senate. Uh, there's so much uh, that can happen in that amount of time. But is there one thing to you that stands out about Dianne Feinstein's legacy? Well, I certainly think from the policy side, you'd have to say the assault weapons ban. I don't think there's any question about that, Steve. That was really something she fought very hard uh, on after shootings here in California. And she really led the way on that. She really did on a national level. It lasted 10 years. That was the length of that legislation. Then it expired and she was not able, though she tried many, many times to reinvigorate that. So I would say that on a personal level, many people really thought Dianne Feinstein was you know, something of a troubleshooter. She was not a bomb thrower, as we say in politics, politically speaking. She was one that brought parties together and, you know, sometimes knocked some heads, but really was a problem solver. And I think those are the things that are going to stand out. I think it's interesting that she came from San Francisco, which is known across the country as being kind of the epicenter for liberalism, yet she really didn't embody that, did she? No, uh, you know, she was really seen as something of certainly the, the moderate one amongst our two senators when Barbara Boxer served with her. And she was seen as someone who she actually learned some interesting political lessons. I was talking even while we were down at the uh, Republican pre presidential debate with a number of people, political folks. She was seen as somebody who learned during while she was serving. When she ran as Cali for California governor and lost, she said, hey, you know what? The Central Valley, she said, I learned the hard way, can't be taken for granted. She became then quite the advocate for farmers and others. So it was interesting to sort of watch her own evolution in the political world as well. Mm -hmm, no question. Uh, in recent months, uh, there had been many calls for her to step down because of her health problems, and uh, she insisted that she wouldn't do that until just February when she announced she wouldn't uh, seek another term. Do you think that uh, all that talk ended up uh, uh, tainting her reputation in any way? I don't think so in the long term. I mean, she took a lot of flack, as you know, Steve, from particularly parts of her own party who said she was a problem, particularly when it came to the Senate Judiciary Committee and approving uh, nominations, et cetera. But I think over the long term here, that's going to be forgotten. And what's going to be remembered are the kind of things that are being talked about tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now you have Governor Newsom, who is in a position where he is going to be filling uh, the role of this Senate seat. Uh, and I know that there's already been controversy about this because he had come out uh, recently and said that he would be appointing uh, a black woman to fill that position uh, in the interim before the next general election. Uh, so what does that mean for him now? Well, he's in, a, he's in a real jam right now because he did make that commitment to appoint a black woman. Of course, we now have one of the three leading candidates for Feinstein's seat, Barbara Lee, a black woman from Oakland. And she said, well, by, oh, by the way, he also said, but who I appoint can't be running next year. And that's the rub, Steve. That's his problem right now. He's got to appoint someone soon because the Democrats have a razor thin margin in the U.S. Senate. And he's got, they want to fill that seat, of course, with a Democrat. But so he's in a real conundrum. How he's going to solve that? Anybody's guess right now.